Hey, hey, what is up, YouTube? I uh, thought I'd just do this message. I'm in the middle of actually editing tomorrow's video, which is uh, a video that I've sort of put together of various drumming friends here in New Zealand who sent through their what they thought of Joey and how much he influenced them. And yeah, I'm just shocked at how many fantastic drummers just held Joey in such a high regard. I'm not shocked that they held him in high regard. I'm shocked that I wasn't hip to it, uh, pretty much. And um, I thought it might be a good opportunity also just to set the record straight on a few things. There have been a few people who have commented along the lines of, oh, this is BS, there's no way you haven't heard, heard of Joey, there's no way you haven't heard of Slipknot. I have heard of Joey Jordison, I have heard of Slipknot. There was no way of avoiding the name Slipknot. Uh, and Joey Jordison, I believe he was like on the cover of Modern Drummer, like he's a known drummer. I was saying <laughs> I've never heard them. So up until just the other day, I had never knowingly heard a Slipknot song or heard Joey Jordison's drumming. So just to clear that up, big difference between saying you've never heard of someone or heard of a band and you've never heard them. I am really surprised so far at how close this is to what I was into around uh, the time where Slipknot actually formed and came out. I did a bit of research since doing the couple of videos that I have done. Formed in 1995. Now, I was actually in a hip-hop, like a rock rap group around that time. Um, and I remember sort of the parties that we used to play at this was when I was at high school and you know the crazy parties that we'd play at people were into Slipknot it was normally more like the hardcore dudes uh were had gone like a little bit heavier up the levels and gotten into Slipknot I had definitely heard the name around then maybe I had you know maybe I had heard uh songs at the parties maybe they were people were putting on CDs back in the day uh, at those parties with Slipknot, I don't know, I never knowingly heard it, but um, yeah, it's just shocking to me that I missed it, given my background, and I was a huge Rage Against the Machine fan, and I uh, wasn't so much into Linkin Park, and you know, Korn, that, they were like a big deal around about the same time, now, I'm not trying to lump Slipknot in with Rage, or Linkin Park, or corn but um it's that sort of new metal world and um oh goodness where i'm here uh yeah and um i'm surprised i missed it like i would have really dug this it's weird coming to it now you know a long time afterward but i can certainly appreciate the well the drumming 100 percent appreciate it and the music um i mean i don't you know, normally wouldn't be putting this stuff on around the house, but uh, I could see absolutely being into this when I was younger, and I can certainly appreciate it now. I think, really, it must have been like the masks and the scary, you know, that sort of almost horror film persona that probably did throw me off, and I probably didn't give them the credit they were due or even give them a chance because of all that and I just sort of thought oh this is you know ugh, I'm not sure about this it's probably not my cup of tea and I, I just missed it and um which is interesting as well because I'm a huge horror fan and um so that I, I don't know what what the barrier was there for me but um for whatever reason I just missed it and uh I stayed clear of it and it is rather sad that it takes a death or a prominent artist's death to stop and uh, acknowledge and recognize a group or a drummer and as I said I think I mentioned on the first video of these uh, Joey Jordison ones I had the same thing with David Bowie and Prince and Chris Cornell they were three uh, big artists that you know I really appreciated that have died fairly recently and um, that feeling of I'm never gonna see this person live again it's just crushing I, I really struggled with the fact that I was never in my life gonna see Chris Cornell uh, 
with Soundgarden or Solo and you know I'm never ever gonna see David Bowie live or Prince live and it's just it's just a really sobering uh, realization and thought and I'm not surprised at all about the outpouring of grief and uh, sadness and you know people sharing comments and whatnot about Joey's passing because this band well a band is so formative for you uh, and it's just it sort of helps to create your own identity and sometimes you know music kind of captures feelings and it captures things that we struggle to actually say so if you're a huge Slipknot fan and you have been for you know 20 25 years it's quite hard to you probably find struggle to describe how much you enjoy the music or what it meant to you because the music is kind of the thing that describes it for you that's capturing how you feel and uh yeah so yeah just incredibly powerful stuff and i think back i mean if i had listened to this band back when they were going off i would have been the same i would you know still be you know deeply deeply entwined you know with yourself and the music and that's just the way that's the power and the magic of music so i really really appreciate everybody's heartfelt comments and um and information that they're hitting me with in the comment section for me so far well <laughs> when joey passed and i started seeing all the tributes particularly from well famous musicians and <laughs> also my buddies you know locally um who are some of them are incredible drummers and with them saying that this guy influenced me so much and i'm heartbroken and you know he he got me to play double kick that is huge and that's when i really stopped and thought man i have to give this more of a shot well i have to at least have a listen because if joey jordison has influenced all these drummers who are amazing to uh, better their craft or even to start drumming I mean that is absolutely huge and it's just such an, an incredible legacy to leave behind and we are left with that legacy you know the music remains and um, that is the main thing and so far I mean look I've only listened to two songs and there were drum cams uh, so I haven't even seen, seen the stage act yet and um and just that clips video which was a bunch of random sort of lower quality clips and i have to say so far the thing that's really stood out is joey's accuracy and speed and power uh, which is just blowing my mind and i think sort of overarching and a bit more holistically it is the way he has or the way he did bring what seems to be like extreme metal some of the more extreme uh subtleties and or not so subtle some of them are as subtle as a as a jackhammer like the blast beats and the you know all the double kick and all that stuff which you'd normally associate with the really heavy stuff it seemed like he had brought that into the new metal world and again i'm reluctant to lump slipknot in with new metal i don't know if the fans would consider them new metal and I don't know why new metal has to be a, a bad thing anyway. I loved new metal at the time. Um, which again, many of you will be going, well, how the hell did you miss Slipknot? But I just did. People miss bands. And you know, you stay loyal to the bands that you like. And that's just the way it is. That's life. You're always going to miss something, no matter how eclectic you think your music taste is. And mine is very eclectic, trust me. Uh, there's so many groups I've missed along the way and doing these videos you know checking out guys like Stephen Wilson, Porcupine Tree, uh, Opeth groups like that I'm just like I just can't believe I missed this and uh, in some cases had never even heard of the band Slipknot I had heard of, Joey Jordison I certainly had heard of yeah guys as I say I've just been editing tomorrow's video which is my friends contributing video messages and uh, probably me blabbing on on that one as well um, and I thought I'd just stop because yeah I'm really enjoying my Slipknot discovery journey and um, 
been singing that damn heretic anthem all day but that was just so groovy and so fat and actually right up my alley so I, I really <laughs> I'm just I don't know I'm just thinking how did I miss this I can't believe I did miss this but um yeah glad to be late to the party now anyway just thought I'd drop this quick message uh, take care out there and uh, hit me in the comments with the videos that I do need to do uh, still to come of Slipknot and Joey. Take care. Oh, and I was just about to upload this video and I just thought the other thing of interest to me just from a purely drum geek uh, thing was... I keep hearing about the Joey Jordison 12 by 7 or as the uh, American friends like to say 7 by 12 12 being the diameter on the snare drum and um, that's a really unusual size snare drum I've had a look around I've just I've done a quick Google around and I can't really find much about the Joey Jordison 12 by 7 was that an auxiliary snare was that an extra snare drum that he would use in a setup or was that his primary snare because it um, yeah, it's an unusual, unusually small diameter, but quite a deep snare, so it's an unusual size. I'm um, seeing a lot of the 13 by six and a half, and just looking at a setup here, 22 by 18, classic uh, <laughs> bass drum size for that era. 13 by six and a half snare. One, how many toms we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven toms, starting at eight inch diameter all the way up to 18. And just going up in two inch increments or eight to ten, twelve, and then one, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Uh symbols we've got what have we got here? We've got rude hi hats. It looks like they're all rudes except for a few signatures. Rude hi hat crash ride. Sixteen inch crash ride. That's a small symbol for a ride. 18 inch rude china, 17 inch rude crash ride, 8 inch signature splash, 6 inch signature splash, that's a small splash. Uh, 8 inch 2002 cup chime, 18 inch rude crash ride, 13 inch signature power hi hats. Okay, so he would use auxiliary hats. I don't remember if I noticed him playing any auxiliary hats in the videos I've done. 20 inch 2002 rock bell ride, man, those things are loud. Uh, 18 inch rude china, 14 inch signature thin china, th small china, and a 13 inch signature mega cup chime. Okay, nice gear. Okay, and looking at the band themselves, because that was the other thing that was a big surprise to me was how big the band was. I think uh, people have been saying it was a nine piece band. So we've got, well, looking at the current members, man, I find these graphs really confusing. Uh, <laughs> the way they do uh, band lineups and you know with former members and whatnot. Sean Gr Sean Crayon percussion backing vocals samples media. Okay, Craig one three three Jones samples media keyboards guitars. I don't think keyboards were very common in uh, bands similar in that era. Uh, Mick Thompson guitars. Corey Taylor lead vocals. Sid Wilson turntables and keyboards Jim Root guitars Alessandro Venturella bass keyboards Jay Weinberg the uh, newer drummer former members Anders Kolsefni lead vocals okay he was just lead vocals for a little while and looks like he was out of the band by 1997. Greg Cuddles, ah, Waltz, percussion backing vocals early as well. Josh Nah Brainard, guitars backing vocals again, 90s early. Paul Gray, bass backing vocals, 1995 to 2010. He died as well. Damn. Uh, Joey Jordison, 1995 to 2013. So, okay, Jay Weinberg's been the drummer for quite a while, eh? Uh, Donnie Steele, guitars uh, back in the early days and came back as bass. Okay. Chris Fenn, percussion backing vocals. And then touring member, Brendan Dana. Big band. Yeah, that's another uh, interesting part for me. Anyway, really going now. Thanks for sticking to the end and I'll uh, see you on the next video.